Hi, Marcel, the wood butcher. And once again, I forgot to show the official opening. Should I start it again? Hell no. Let's just go on with the topic of today. The topic of this video is, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the many people that have actually donated used tools. I mean, gave me for free used tools to my shop. Anything from fairly new to like 1932 antiques. The first person I want to thank is a person by the name of Douglas Remy, who is a alumni of mine from New York Military Academy that donated to my shop a, uh, a 1932 Dumont, which is later known as Craftsman, scroll saw and bench grinder, you know, dual action bench grinder mounted on a table on wheels, right? Uh, myself and a, actually uh, uh, erased that myself. Two people, a friend of mine and my and and myself, Mr. Bob Fowler and I, had to make a trip to Havistro, New York, to pick up this saw. And it was worth it. Well, it was buried in the back of a storage shed. So we unloaded the storage shed, the three of us, Doug Remy, Bob Fowler, and myself unloaded the storage shed cautiously not to damage any other family heirlooms to get the saw and the table out and we did first thing we did once we got it out we found an outlet plugged it in make sure the goddamn thing even went on because i wasn't going to lug it all the way back to middletown new jersey from Havistraw, new york if it was a piece of crap but it did. It went on. It worked. So bang, boom, and I use it. I had to do some refurbishing on it and some minor maintenance, but it works fine. But I, I thank you, Mr. Douglas Remy, uh, New York Military Academy alumni brother, right? The second piece of equipment I got for nothing was basically from a neighbor <coughs> where I had to do, he knew I was in, you know, for my full-time job during the day for right now, even being retired from the service, right, was uh, telecommunications installations. I do the, yeah, I'm the monkey that designs and installs the the data, the voice, the TV, the coax for your, uh, you know, for your TVs and the, the, the cabling for your security cameras and stuff like that. Well, he needed a couple of coax drops put down to come off his, to extend cable to, a, to three rooms in his house. I told him, I got the cable, I got the time. He said, well, how much are you going to charge me? I said, you're a friend of mine. I said, I can't charge you much. I said, but I'll tell you what. I said, next couple times you see me at the gin mill, buy me a couple of pops and I'll be okay. A couple of pops, you know, little soldiers. Yeah, a couple of shots, whatever. And a beer too, maybe, whatever. So, thank you. This man, I completely am embarrassed that I forget his name. I, I do, but I know he lives on New Mammoth Road in Middletown, New Jersey. But he gave me a 1962 Craftsman radial arm saw in pristine condition. Dado blades, the table, at the wrenches, everything. Owner's manual, everything complete. I asked him. I said, how much do you want for this? Because this is more, this is worth more than I would have charged you for putting the cable in. 
He says, I brought a new table saw, and the new table saw he bought was one of them Powermatics that's, you know, like like uh, longer than a whale's nose to tail, you know, and all of this and this and that. You know. He was a woodworker, too. He told me, as long as I know what's going to somebody that's going to use it and will learn how to use it and knows how to use it, he says, you got it. He said, but I got to give you one piece of advice. He says, the nickname for these radial arm saws, the old ones especially, are radial armless saws. The radial arm saw is probably one of the most versatile saws ever invented. However, they're probably also one of the most dangerous saws ever invented. But if you practice safety with them, you can plane lumber on them. You can, you, know, you can do anything with them. But, okay, so that's enough of that. The third item I got uh, was what? What the hell? What the hell was it? What the hell was it? Uh, oh, a second drill press. A Ryobi drill press. Not a real big one, but for free. The drill press had been used one time to machine out a piece of metal in a metal shop, and they found that it didn't meet their needs. Well, my full-time job, we were working in that place, and they said, does anybody else, does anybody want this drill press? Not one. Uh, excuse me. I got to do this the right way. Right. <laughs> Not one. Not two, but three of my co-workers just all pointed to me and said, Marcel will take it. And Marcel did, right? I don't have it hooked up yet. But this thing had only been used one time. It's a Ryobi drill press. It's in my shop. I have my other drill press. Maybe I need two. I don't think so. But you know what I'm thinking? Maybe I'll take the second drill press and turn it into a spindle sander. You know, because I've seen videos on how you can turn a drill press into a spindle sander and save my time of changing bits and fittings and, you know, and drill press tables and this and that and just have two drill presses instead of one. What the hell? What do I know? The second or the fifth thing. Am I on number four? Okay. Number five was a dual spindle bench grinder from the same person that I got the uh, drill press from. It's a skill. Or, no, excuse me. It was a craftsman. Still in the box. The box wasn't even opened. I opened the box. The owner's manual is still sealed in the plastic for nothing. Thank you, that company. I can't give their name because they're a daily client of mine. But I will tell you this. They're in Manalip in New Jersey. But thank you so much for those two donations to my shop, especially when you found out what it is I do on the side and you offered me. Number six, six, seven, eight, I'm going to stop there, were by another New York Military Academy alumni by the name of Mr. Bob Fowler, who decided it was time for me to learn how to use a planer, a manual planer. So the first thing it gives me is this little guy. Right? I used it. I used it for like, you know, after stuff came off the sander, you know, off the uh, tabletop belt sander and this sander, and it didn't quite match well. Bang, bang, bang. This little guy here was great for doing that. Oh, 
how it took me, how to learn, how to adjust this thing to make it work right. Because I had never used a hand planer in my friggin' life. Then, the next number, what are we up to? Like number eight, seven, eight, whatever. Whatever number we're up to, I don't care. Was Mr. The same person, Mr. Bob Fowler, visits my house, New York Military Academy alumni, who's an extremely accomplished woodworker, actually like a in the caliber of a cabinet maker, right? Comes to the house one day, and he drops off three more hand planers. He drops off this guy. This guy, and this guy, well, me being a person that doesn't really know crap about how to use planers, I mean, I was just getting used to using this guy without gouging stuff and stuff like that. And then he hands me these big ones. Well, have I used them? Well, I'll say I've attempted to use them. But I thank Mr. Fowler so much. I've attempted to use them, but I really haven't learned how to use them all the way yet. But I'm learning by trial and error. So if anyone can give me some tips on how to use, you know, this guy versus this guy and this guy versus this guy and this guy properly, leave me some comments down below because... I, I, I've been trying. I've been experimenting on crap wood. Another uh, stuff I've gotten for nothing. People just, viewers, you know, they, they gave me was a lot of, you know, cordless stuff. A whole slew of craftsmen. The cordless radio, the cordless 90-degree drill, the cordless little saw with, a, I think it's, what, a 5-inch, 6-inch blade, whatever, I don't know, whatever, right? Uh, and, 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 and the list goes on. And again, it was Mr. Bob Fowler, the New York Military Academy alumni and a brother veteran that lives close by that gave me this stuff. Now it goes on. Oh, the list doesn't stop. One of my cousins, well, a cousin-in-law, kind of, sort of, you know, sees a video that I posted a long time ago about receiving some free tools, decides he's going to come up, and he gives me a Makita corded drill, a Makita corded Skill saw, I already have three skill saws, so I really didn't need the other saw. But that's okay. That's okay. But but these th this is is what makes me feel good. And they all told me it was because we saw the way you were working and how you were working and what you were working with. So we wanted to help you. Well, if you want to help, that'll be fine too. Okay, but anyway, this is Marcel, the woodwork. Oh, oh, subscribe, subscribe down below, and please leave a comment. You like me, you like me. You don't, you don't. I really don't care. That's what they call something. It's called all frigging concern. If you don't like it, if you don't like what I do, post it. If you like what I do, post it. 
If you want to tell me to go F myself, I don't know what the frig I'm talking about or anything like that, post it. If you like what I'm doing, post it. Because that's what's going to make me continue and move on. Okay? And believe me, my full intention is to move on with better lighting, better sound, better video to bring you the beginning or experienced woodworker. I don't know. A different point of view on how to do things. Okay? So for right now, this is Marcel, the wood butcher, saying, protect your eyes, protect your lungs, protect your ears. Never, ever forget about these guys. So, take care and Semper Fi.